Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Steve Lochran, as people have said. I normally work on the Hadoop stuff. This was something I did in my spare time last year. It's called Distant Bot. It is up and running. If you're running Twitter, you can tweet to at Distant Bot, and it may actually reply to you right now. Okay? And the codes are there for you to play with. So what is Distant Bot? It was a small robot. I created a Twitter account in January 2017. Trump's inauguration, when we first discovered that politicians were prepared to state random facts. So I thought, if they can do it, so can I. But being a software engineer, I didn't actually write anything, because I'm lazy. Until along comes April, when prime minister in the UK says, we're going to have a general election and we will destroy everybody. So at that point, I actually brought up Distant Bot, brought it live, and we can see it working. Here's a screenshot from May 2017. Theresa May says something. We need the right of something or other. Within 15 seconds, the distant bot has replied, going, we need a strong leader. Her name is Angela Merkel. May or may not be true, but the point is, it was a heckle, and it came in first. So the point is, is that when politicians say something, the role of distant bot was to argue with them ahead of anybody else. Did it work? Well, here's a screenshot of one of the online betting sites on the night of the election, and Jeremy Corbyn and Theresa May are actually roughly the same as who's going to win. I would like to say I consider myself personally responsible for that. I haven't been summoned to Parliament to explain that, and I wasn't given any rubles either, so I don't think I was there, but it's a start, okay? And we can, we can all join together and take part in this. And interestingly enough, I brought it up again on Friday. It's just, it is a Raspberry Pi running, plugged into my Wi-Fi router. Booted it up on Friday. Still live, still heckling politicians. First thing we have, Theresa May saying, I'm off for the G7 summit. Distant Bot says, you're the worst performing economy in the G7. Um, perfect timing, still absolutely live. The heckles from last year turn out to be still valid, which is kind of disappointing. But again, it shows you having robots set to provide abuse in you know, context awareness is actually quite good. I have no context awareness. It just happens to be picking sentences at random. But that actually turns out to work. I don't know why you're laughing. Here is the architecture. We have, we're hooked into the Twitter fire hose. My little robot listens to what gets tweeted. When it gets a feed, one of the people it's following, it looks to see in the data directory if there is a file of that name. If so, it picks a line and replies. If it just gets a mention that isn't actually a reply, it picks up the file self.txt. Has anybody tried it so far this, this session? So tweet the distant bot and you should get a reply. And finally, I have the control plane, which is I can manage this through the, direct, the DM API of Twitter itself. Saves me having to actually find the, the little pine SSHing into it. So that is the core architecture. It is 450 lines of Ruby code right now. Um, I'm going to switch to the code itself for a second. It's a little bit of Ruby code. It starts up. It listens. Um, let's find where it begins. It basically gets a reply to say, is it me? I create, ignores retweets. It builds a reply, and it sends it back. So it, it, it is trivially simple. OK, it, it, it responds. It keeps going forever until it's sold to shot down. And it just, it just heckles. That's all it does, is it follows people. And if you're on the list of people to argue with, it will argue with you. If you're not on the list and you mention it, but not a reply, it'll argue with you, and I can tell it what to do. How does it actually work? It picks sentences at random. And we, we shall try an example here. Um, I would like somebody from the audience, maybe Nick or somebody else, to think of an extra sentence for me to add in as a heckle. No? All right, then, hello, audience, pay attention. All right. If I comment out some of the others, it's a bit more likely. So there is me. I've added a new command to the file. That's very good, but that's on my laptop. And distant bot lives in a Raspberry Pi at home. So we have to have a blockchain-based communications mechanism to publish that. So I go git um, commit directory. I'm going to commit the directory and uh, commit and push. So we go push. That's good. So now it's on GitHub, or Microsoft GitHub, as we now have to call it. And it's up there. How are we actually going to get it to distant bot? This is where 
have to find that window. We talk to the fact that distant bot has actually got a command interface too, which is on the DM channel. In theory, anybody actually who is following and heckling can use this API too. Um, it just so happens that Boris Johnson and Theresa May don't understand command lines. The fact nobody actually listens to them, even when she tells them face to face. So now we just do an update. And we wait. And there we go. It's pulled it. So now it's ready to heckle. OK, so it's, apart from the fact I can't update the code, I can basically run this from, from anywhere, telling it what to do and heckle things. So now if I say something, pay attention, you two in the front. Hello? Sorry, we had a small ops problem there, so I will say pay attention despite ops problems. And we go. And um, dissident bot will see that. Something else here. And I get replies. And um, what happens is oh, that's not much of a reply. Distant bot listens, it gets responses. It's not working today. It is up and running, honest, okay, believe me. Um, this is me logged in as me, let's see what happens. Unless you, you've overloaded it. You've overloaded this thing, anyway, there we go. So, it runs, it heckles. This is distant bot itself doing the replies. Interesting enough, one of the problems here is actually, it is really hard to actually test this stuff. Picking random sentences is returning them, but you have to make sure all this stuff is working. Um, because I was not doing this at work, I was using Ruby rather than the build tool. I wasn't doing any testing apart from deployment. Fortunately, the Conservative Party press office during the election issued a press release every 15 minutes all day. Um, so basically, I could deploy them within 15 minutes and knew whether things were working or not. Halfway through the election, I got blocked, I think basically because I was replying too fast. So I ended up adding some jitter and sleep and a small possibility of not replying just to keep people happy. Things always go wrong in operations. First one was distant bot kept on rebooting every night. I tracked that down to the fact that my Wi-Fi base station is set to reboot every night and that powers off the USB driver for the little Raspberry Pi. The other fun thing was it accidentally started spamming a user called Self. Whoever Self is on Twitter, I had to apologize for them because that Self heckle thing, every time you mention distant bot, it would just tweet to Self, and I think they got a bit bored of it. So that, you know, but it, it's interesting operational issues there. You have to create other accounts just to, just to test. The worst news is, is that it, I left it up and running during the election. I had it sending messages out, completely random facts. People would argue with it. I mean, that is not funny at all, especially from anybody from the UK. So basically, someone says some fact, it goes, you're arguing with a robot and losing. You says yes every time. It goes, I tried to get a job as Putin, for Putin, but failed the interview. And it would just go on like that. Um, people do not seem to recognize that a account with the name Distant Bot, whose photograph is a Raspberry Pi, whose link is to a home page on GitHub, probably isn't a real person. And that's not good, because these people go on and vote later. <laughs> um, this is really not good, OK? I'm, you know, uh, and the, but the other scary thing is, right, is that I could make up random facts to heckle politicians and it appeared to contribute to the level of discourse going on on the internet. So we know there are idiots out there. They will seem to argue with random facts made up. They probably believe random facts too. So you could say, well, maybe we shouldn't be allowing these people on the internet, but they're still out there and they're still gonna vote. And it's either that, throw them off Twitter and they'll be on a Facebook group. It's just as bad. But 
that's the scary thing. So if you look at all this stuff that's been going on with Russian involvement and all this kind of stuff, what it really means is there are lots of idiots out there. And what Facebook and Twitter have done have reduced the cost of communicating with idiots. Okay, they've lowered the barrier. Till now, you had to produce a newspaper called the Daily Mail. You had to have Fox, but it was expensive. The barriers to entry were quite high. Now, Raspberry Pi, 450 lines of code, and you can engage head to head with the idiots. So, we've got a command line. We've already done that. You can pull down and play with yourself. All you need to do is download a configuration file, give it your Twitter secrets, which you can create an API account for it, and you can just deploy it. Make up your own accounts, heckles, anything you like. Twitter is quite happily happy to let you do this, provided you don't put URLs. As soon as I stuck my first URL in, the account got blocked. And what that does is it gives me hints about Twitter's spam detention, detection. So they clearly, they want to defend against spam. They've done the work there. They say, OK, how do you recognize spam? Things like the ratio of followers to followees, stuff they say. Do they post URLs? Do they try and follow lots of people, et cetera, et cetera. The, as soon as I put a URL in there, kicks that off, gets blocked. Stop sending URLs. Just start telling politicians they're idiots and should resign. Nothing stops it whatsoever. And I think it's because it doesn't tip over the thresholds. It is too hard to distinguish from human beings. Um, if you are going to attack it, I'd say you should be looking at things like, what is the latency to respond? If you say something, if it responds immediately to something Theresa May or Boris Johnson says every time, suspicious, you could look at the hours of operation and say, yeah, that's kind of suspicious too. But otherwise, it seems to get through. And I think as well, what about looking at what it says? And the answer is, well, actually, my robot was stating truth. And we have basically the some of the most senior politicians on the planet state utter lies, and Twitter gets away with it. So why shouldn't we be allowed to dissent? At the same time, it's kind of bleak, because we apparently have seen lots of evidence that Russians and other nation states are interfering with democracy. It is a lot harder to detect and defend against this than it would be to detect spam, for example. When I was running this code, the biggest, actual, hardest thing to do was to try and think up new things to say on a regular basis. Once you'd used a heckle a few times, I just turned that one off and tried to think of a new one. But actually, content generation is the hard thing. And if you ever read some of the that's come out from the US about what the, the Russian Internet Research Group did or whatever, a big amount of the effort was they had a whole room full of people who were trying to generate new content and start arguments. And it, it's that. It's the content generation that's quite hard. The scary thing is often actually worse than that. The people doing this are often basically art students and graduates and people with language skills. And they, they tend to cost less than software engineers in terms of bringing stuff to production. So you can have one person to write a 450-line Ruby script, and then you just have hundreds of people that speak English vaguely well. And that's it. That, that's basically your, your, you know, your election disruption unit. So one. Dead easy to build a robot that interferes with the, the internet. Two, lots of other people seem to be doing it as well. Three, is it ethically right for me to deploy something like this? Hands up who's going to do it when they get home. No, OK. I think you should. I think you should really think about this, because otherwise, if the, you know, the other teams are busy interfering in the world this way, then why shouldn't we? And if you've got more of us there with a bit of jitter and more random people heckling, then actually we can make sure that our message gets across more broadly. Yeah. Code's there. Download and play. And now we're on time. So are there any questions from anyone in the audience? OK, first question. I have an idea for preventing the spam detection. You could kind of pull in other tweets from other people just randomly, so you get different content, make it harder to detect the spam. Yeah, I think Respond. sometimes that's why spam bots retreat. The other thing is they look at conversations. So you can look at followers to followees, the ratio. And has a, a robot appeared to have a conversation with other people? So mine hadn't done that, so that would be easy to detect. But say if you have enough robots, you can create that graph of a loop, and I think that becomes really hard to detect. 
So you can basically, you can bootstrap a network of robots that know each other, that follow, that amplify, and it's hard to both detect and defend against that. More comments or questions? More tweets? Somebody at the front. Could you improve the code in any way? No. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> right. One second. If people start a discussion with it, does that mean that you pass the Turing test? Actually, it doesn't. If you talk to it, it will reply most of the time. But if you reply to it, it stops replying because it was too easy to get into the loop. You ever see those things where robots argue with each other and never get bored? I didn't want to do that. Mm, it got bored, so it just hangs up. So the point is, if you talk to it and it doesn't reply, it's concluded, Niels, that you're boring. And, you know, and I don't be offended by this, but does that mean that it is, in fact, self-aware? Who knows? You know, I mean, who knows? Sometimes it stops talking to me, and it, you know, I'm going to have to kill it if it keeps doing that, really. <laughs> anyway, it's running for the rest of the day. Tweet to distant bot, see what happens, okay? All right, thanks, Steve.